Appreciate you being out on a Monday night. Amen. Not a regular church night, a Monday night. It's good to see you in the house of God. Pray the Lord will bless you just for being in your place. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I want to read from verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have re received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Father, we are thankful to be back in Priceville. We are thankful for Brother Smith and his wife. Lord, we truly enjoyed the fellowship this evening we thank you for this church and these folk who are faithful to be in their place. I pray, God, you continue to keep your hand on the work. Amen. We thank you for these that have come and visited from other places. Pray you'd bless them as well. I, I ask again for good liberty. Lord, you did bless the day yesterday. Amen. But, Lord, uh, we need you once again tonight. I pray you'd make the preaching time easy. And, Lord, our desire is to be a help. Uh, to these your people, but Lord, perhaps if there would be one here unsettled, pray they'd get in tonight, get in before it's too late. Yeah, we ask for our nation, Lord, we're in a mess. I pray you to oversee it. We know, Lord, that you raise up kings and Amen. bring down kings, and Lord, we're going to trust you uh, that you'll give us four more years of grace. Amen. Help us in this, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. As you noticed, as I read, I was emphasizing that word things, okay? Now, there in verse 9, verse 9 is, is used quite a bit talking about heaven. Now, I know that, uh, you know, the, uh, you can make application, uh, but uh, I don't believe that's necessarily what, what the context is about, okay? But I, I, you could use it in that sense where it talks about in verse 9, uh, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor hear, ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And, and usually it will be used at a, at a funeral or, you know, something along that line where they're talking about heaven and how wonderful heaven's going to be. And truly heaven will be a wonderful place. Amen. Uh, heaven is far beyond what you and I could even imagine. When John the Revelator tried to describe uh, the New Jerusalem and you know things uh, you know that await us in uh, out in uh, the future, uh, the best that John could do was to use that phrase "no more." Yeah. Uh, when he was talking about uh, the other side, it's a place of no more sin. Yeah. No more suffering, no more sorrow, no more sickness, 
no more death. Amen. Yeah. Uh, why is that? Because in reality, it's going to be beyond what you and I could even think. Right. Amen. Uh, it's going to be such a wonderful place. Uh, we'll be there with our Lord, uh, enjoying the glory of his presence. Amen. Amen. Right. And, and truly, I hath not seen nor ear heard all those things that await us on the other side. Okay. So you're not doing injustice to the text. But I believe the primary reference here is how I emphasize that, uh, you know, that word things. Uh, the primary reference here is to the deep things of God. Yeah. Look, look at verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Yeah. Amen. Hey, our God is not shallow. Nothing shallow about our God. Amen. In fact, uh, it, 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 it boggles men's minds how that this great God who spoke the worlds into existence can make himself known to a child who's come to an age of accountability and yet dumbfound the most learned professors. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you, do, you don't understand God just through uh, natural things. Right. Okay. I'm running a little ahead of myself, so I want to back up. But uh, when you think about it, our God is not shallow. Man is shallow. Why is that? Man lives for things. Amen. You ever hear the expression, the difference between men and boys is the price of the toys? Amen. 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 Uh, we're fascinated with things. You know, man thinks he's coming up with something all the time. Yeah. But in reality, everything that he comes up is pretty shallow because it doesn't last. Right. Right. Amen. It's here and it's gone. Yeah. Let me just use uh, one example here. When you think about phones, I remember when they first came out with cellular phones. They were as big as a brick, and you run an antenna up, and you had two hands to hold on to it, and you literally ran around saying, can you hear me now? Uh, then they began to downsize them, put more technology in them. But I can remember when you still just held it in one hand, you'd run an antenna up on it. Okay. And then they downsized them more and made flip phones. Yeah. All right. And then they come out with smartphones. <laughs> hey. You know the thing about them smartphones, uh, people are waiting in line yeah. to get the latest smartphone, be it an Android or an iPhone. Uh, I'm only repeating terminology. I really don't know the difference between iPhone and Android. Okay. Amen. Amen. But, uh, I, you know, when they first come out with them, boy, they, 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 they'd wait overnight, sometimes two or three nights, to be the first one to get that latest iPhone or smartphone. But, but the thing about it is, it's so shallow that in another year or two, they had another one. And I don't know what they're up to now, uh, 10 or 12 or whatever, amen, iPhone 12 or Android 12 or, you know, whatever. I don't know. Uh, it, it'll be obsolete and you'll have to get another one. That's right. Amen. <laughs> and now, you know, they, they, they did away with the flip phones, trying to get you in a smartphone, but now they're going back, to their, they're, they're going to fold. The phones fold. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, uh, 
I mean, it's crazy. You open that thing up, and it's an, it's an iPad. It's a phone, but it's an iPad. And, uh, I mean, they'll wait in line to get that thing. It, it, it's amazing, too. It doesn't bother them. You know, $1,200, whatever it is, doesn't bother them. Boy, they've got to have that latest thing. But give a little while, and the newness wears off. It, you know, it, it, it gets me. They talk about, uh, well, this one's got a better camera. And they talk about pixels, and I don't even know what pixels are. I know what pickles are. That's pretty close, brother. And they talk about how much storage, and you know, you, you get what I'm saying? But man gets all geared up in things. That's right. Hey, man. Uh, you, you can see it in any, in any avenue of life. How man gets all worked up over a thing. But in reality, it's pretty shallow. Pretty shallow. But there's nothing shallow about God. Amen. 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 And here's where I was headed, okay? When you think about the, the deep things of God, that's why the most learned professors, you know, they've got all, all the letters after their name, you know, uh, D.D. and D.B. and Ph.G. and, and uh, L.T.D. They don't make them no more. So. And uh, uh, they, they can read this and read it as a textbook and have the audacity to call it Hebrew folklore and never see it for what it is. Amen. Hey, man. Hey, you don't understand this book with natural eyes. Yeah. Right. You don't understand this book with natural ears. Amen. You, you don't comprehend it with man's wisdom. Right. Yeah. Amen. Hey, these things are deep things and they're only revealed as God, the Spirit of God reveals them. Right. Amen. Yeah. But now, by the same token... God does not want you and I to be ignorant. That's why we can be simple-minded. Uh, people actually refer to us as being simple-minded. You remember when uh, 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 the disciples there in Acts 4, they, they were uh, talked about being just ignorant fishermen, yeah. but they took note that they had been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, we may not be the sharpest tool in the, in, in the shed, but we don't have to be because it's not our intellect that's going to discern the book. Amen. It's Amen. God's Spirit that reveals God's understanding in the deep things of God. Amen. That's why people read over it and miss everything about it. Yeah. Uh, nothing shallow about our God. Uh, the deep things of God can only be discerned by the Spirit of God. Now, I've got about four little thoughts here I want to share with you along this line of the deep things of God, okay? The first thought is simply this. Have you ever pondered the deep love of God? When man speaks of love, a lot of times it's shallow. That's right. A lot of times all it is is an attraction. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Uh, I'm thankful that boys are attracted to girls and girls are attracted to boys. God put that in them. Amen. Yeah. Okay. But love gets beyond that, just that attraction. Right. Amen. Okay. Uh, it, it gets deeper than just that attraction to one another. I, I'll, I'll use Barbara and I, embarrass her. Uh, I, I met her on her 16th birthday. And when she passed by my way, boy, she caught my eye. There was definitely an attraction. Amen. And when she disappeared out of sight, I turned to the one by me. And I said, who was that? <laughs> Amen. 
They said, that's my friend Marv. Would you like to meet her? And I said, boy, would I? <laughs> but that tra attraction's gone much further. Because we've been married 53 years. The Lord. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, I know a lot of marriages break up over other things. Finances is the worst thing and right. stuff like that. But still yet, if, 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 all you, if all you marry for is an attraction, it's not going to last. That's right. Amen. That's pretty shallow. Hey, when she married me, there wasn't no pot here. <laughs> I had more hair and it had color. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In fact, I was so thin, she, she's afraid to sit on my lap. And so she thought she'd hurt me. I was so thin. <laughs> now she might have trouble getting on my lap. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying, hey, the deep love yeah. of God. It's not shallow. Right. Okay? When you try to ponder it, the, the, when, when John in his gospel tried to tell us, the, the word that he used is he said, for God so loved Amen. the world. Why is that? It's deeper than what you and I can comprehend. It's, it goes beyond what, what our understanding is. So loved. It's like to the nth degree. Now, you ponder this, okay? I, I, I often said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, we were no prize. I mean, there was no reason God should have been attracted to us. Amen. 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 Uh, in reality, you try to scope this thing out, and we're talking about the God who spoke the worlds into existence. Amen. And all we are is a little dirt ball, a little dust ball, yeah. those dust bunnies under the bed, just a little dust ball, on this bigger dirt ball hung out here in space, and yet God looks down upon you and I with such a great love that he so loved you and I. Amen. That's a pretty deep thing. Amen. Now, you don't discern God's love through creation. Creation testifies that there's a God. But you won't know the love of God by observing creation. You'll be in awe of who God is. What the psalmist said in Psalm 19, he talked about the heavens declare his handiwork. There in uh, uh, Romans where it talks about, uh, you know, creation. Okay. My point is that uh, when you think about it, there's no reason that God should be interested in any of us. Amen. Okay? Uh, there in Romans 5, he says that God commendeth his love toward us. Yeah. Uh, I, and it goes on and says that while we were yet sinners, amen, uh, nothing lovely about us. Uh, nothing good to be said about us. Yeah. All just a sorry lot. But the love of God is so deep. Amen. He wasn't looking at what we were. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're running ahead of me. <laughs> Amen. It's a deep love. The love of God is a deep love. Yeah, I, I saw him about that rich young ruler Sunday morning. You know, he come running to Jesus, good master. What good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, you read on down through in Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 10, and it says there about verse 21, 
It says, in Jesus beholding him, loved him. Knowing how arrogant he was, yeah. how self-centered he was, how self-righteous he was. Remember, all these have I kept from my youth. Yeah. Good night, what do I lack? knew everything about him, yet looked on him and loved him. Amen. He knows everything about you and I. Amen. And yet he beholds us and loves us. Amen. You don't learn the love of God through creation. But the love of God, the creation will testify that there is a God. Um, you know, God's interested in every man. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Um, what did Paul write to Timothy? That uh, he would have all men to be saved. God would have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Then you'll get these that want to... They, you know, they read it just as a book. They'll say, well, what about the heathen? Well, when you think about heathen, our nation is fast becoming a heathen nation. Amen. Now, I know what they're getting at. They're talking about somebody down on the Amazon River or something like that. And, uh, you know, they're, they're so backward. They, they don't know anything about modern things modern technology, all the modern medicines and what have you, amen, okay? Uh, and, and they'll talk about, well, what about them? Well, I know this, that God is so interested in every man that if a man looks at God's creation and says there has to be something more, then God will get them somebody to tell them all about it. Amen. Amen. Best illustration I can give you just off the top of my head is that, that account of Jim Elliott and those three men that were with him Amen. and they were trying to reach those uh, Inca Indians. And, and uh, uh, I mean, they were, they, they were going, I mean, they, they had never seen a white man. They, did, you know, they, they, weren't, they didn't know what the plane was and all that kind of stuff. Amen. But the, those Inca Indians killed all four of those men. Yeah. But by the grace of God, his wife, Jim Elliott's wife, was able to win those men who had killed her husband. Yeah. She was able to win them to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All I'm saying is that God got them a witness. Somebody in that tribe had to say, hey, there's got to be something more. There has to be some kind of higher power. There has to be some kind of God. Amen. Well, even those heathen that you talk about, they'll, they'll make some kind of God. They'll know there's something more than just what man can be or what man can do. But the goodness of, of the thing is that God so loved them as much as he does love you and I Amen. that he'll, he'll do whatever it takes to get them the gospel message through by whatever means Amen. that they might come to know the wonderful love of God yeah. and the full and free pardon of sin. Amen. I usually tell folk, before you worry about the heathen, where are you? Amen. Amen. If you're so concerned about the heathen, you ought to get saved, get part of the church, yeah. get active in missions and uh, and try and reach those quote unquote heathen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you, God loves the world. It's a deep thing. The love of God is a deep thing. Knowing everything about us, and yet God loves you and I. I've got another message that I preach. I may have preached it here. I don't know. I know I haven't preached it here since you've been here. And, uh, but uh, it. In that message, I talk about the greatest love story that's ever been told. 
And that love story permeates the whole Word of God Amen. to show the deepness of God's love. I mentioned Adam so loved Eve. Remember I talked Amen. about him? Amen. That Adam chose to die. Eve was in the transgression. But Adam so loved Eve that he chose to die because of his love for Eve. Amen. Hey, it pictures you and I were the ones in the transgression. But Jesus so loved you and I, Jesus chose to die. They didn't kill him on the cross. He dismissed his own spirit. He, he marched himself up Golgotha's mount. He laid himself down. He made the atonement possible because Jesus really does love you and I. Amen. 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 That thing permits the word of God. Uh, knowing everything about us, God loves us. You, you go through that book and you read about Selma and Rahab. Now, you know Rahab about her from Joshua chapter 2, how that Joshua sends two men, two spies, to check out the city of Jericho. Now, these two men weren't homegrown. They stood out. The men of the city knew they didn't belong there. And they would have killed those two men. But Rahab hid them. And Rahab told those two men, we know about your God. Amen. We heard about your God. We know how he parted the Red Sea. We know how he destroyed Egypt. And that was some 40 plus years earlier. And they were still talking about it in Rahab's day in the city of Jericho. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, she hid those men with an agreement that her and her house would be spared when they come to take the city. Now, when God gave them the city, you know, it was a unique way. They marched around the city one time every day for six days. Nobody said a word, okay? And then the, the seventh day, the priests bore up under that ark and they marched around seven times. And after they marched around seven times, the priests blew the trumpets and all the people shouted. Amen. Well, we know they weren't Baptists because all, <laughs> all of them shouted. And the walls came tumbling down. Amen. And out of that rubble comes Rahab and her family. Now, I don't know. Salma could have been one of the two spies. The two spies were unnamed. I don't know. He could have been. But at the same time, he could have just been there when Rahab and her family came out of the rubble. But remember when Adam saw Eve, he saw the creation that God had made and how wonderful it was. But when Adam woke up out of that sleep and his eyes fixed on Eve, he had never seen anything that beautiful. And when he realized God had made her for him, he probably took 59 laps around the garden saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Well, that's the same thing when Selma saw Rahab. Boy, it, it was love at first sight. He was just as infatuated with her as Adam was with Eve. I mean, he was in love with this woman, Rahab. Well, he announced, he made his announcement to the good brethren. Can you see him? He says, I'm going to marry that woman. And they said, Rahab, you don't want her. Selma, you can do better. You, you don't want her. She's got baggage. She's no prize. You can do a whole lot better than Rahab. But see, Selma wasn't looking at what she had been. Amen. Amen. Selma was looking at what she would become. Amen. And that picture is God's great love for you and I. Amen. Every one of us has baggage. Amen. And such were some of you, yeah. Yeah. but you've been washed. Amen. Yeah. But see, our Lord wasn't looking at what we had been. He so loved us, 
that he was looking at what we would become Amen. as the bride of Christ. Amen. I'm telling you, it's a deep love. Amen. You can't fall out of it. <laughs> God's going to love you regardless of you. God's going to love you. Amen. It's a deep love. Now, does that mean you overlook sin? No, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that God really does love each and every one of us. It's a deep yeah. thing, the deep things of God. Well, there's the deep love of God, but then how about this? The deep mercy of God. God's mercy is deep. You know, when you think about mercy, you were talking about uh, uh, not getting everything that's coming to us. Amen. That's mercy. Amen. Mercy is not getting everything that we should get. It's God. It's God being so kind and so gracious that he, that He doesn't give us what we deserve. There in the book of Ezra, also in Psalms, and there's a verse in Job that says similar things. And in Ezra chapter 9, it talks about that he hath punished us less than our iniquities deserve. Amen. That's mercy. Yeah. He punishes less, punishes us less than our iniquities deserve. If every one of us still yet right now at this time got what we deserved, we'd be without hope. Amen. But it's God's mercy. It's a deep thing. Uh, Psalm 136. Every verse in Psalm 136 ends with, and his mercy endureth forever. Uh, you want a picture of his mercy? Ephesians 2. And you has he quickened, Amen. which were dead in trespasses and sin. And then Paul paints a picture of mankind, sends it to the church at Ephesus. Children of darkness, children of wrath, deserving of condemnation, nothing lovely about us. But then in verse 4 it says, but God, who is rich in mercy, Amen. wherein he loved us. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm talking about God punishes us less than we deserve. Amen. It's a deep thing. Amen. Amen. It runs along with his love. It goes, goes along with his grace. When you think about love, it's un backing up for just a minute. It's unconditional. Amen. You you love your children not because they're just pretty angels. I mean, they always do the best. Okay. Amen. Amen. I, uh, no, you love them despite right. everything else. Yeah. Well, if if you can do it in your humanity. Multiply that soul to the nth degree. And God loves us despite us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then God has mercy upon us despite us. Amen. Amen. We, don't, we don't deserve mercy. I'm thankful where it says his mercies are new and fresh every morning. Amen. It's a deep thing. You can get every, every morning, get up with a clean slate. Get up every morning and check the board and there's nothing there. Uh, you put it under the blood and it disappears. Amen. It's like it never happened. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not making light of sin. I'm making much of his mercy. Amen. Sin grieves God. Sin grieves God, but his mercy is so deep. Yeah. He's a merciful God, Amen. a gracious God. 
a loving God. He's merciful to us. Amen. So I get a little put out with these folks that say, you poor Christians, you just miss out on so much. And I'm thinking, hallelujah, glory to God. Thankful for his love, thankful for his mercy. I'd get too much if it wasn't for his mercy and if it wasn't for his love. Amen. Well, there's the deep love of God, the deep mercy of God. But here, now, this is part of it, the deep righteousness of God. Our God always does right. Amen. He always does right. The deep righteousness of God. What I mean is God does love us and God is merciful, but God just doesn't turn his back when we're, when we're at odds. God doesn't sweep sin under the rug. Amen. God doesn't rename it and call it something respectable. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Our God's a righteous God. No one will appear before him and be able to point a finger and say, you did not do me right. God does everybody right. Amen. He always does right. Thank God. Yeah, he was, not to rehash things, but he was right in Noah's day. Yeah. He was right in Lot's day. Yeah. Uh, our God always does right. He was right when Jesus hung on the cross. Amen. If you want to talk about injustice, something being unjust, here was a man who had never sinned. Which one of you convinceth me of sin? Now, you and I know who he was. He was the sinless son of God, the spotless lamb of God. Amen. The virgin born son of God. Amen. Okay. Uh, his impeccability. He, he couldn't sin. He was God manifest in the flesh. Never did wrong. Could you imagine being Joseph, his stepfather, and uh, never having to correct him? Amen. Amen. Mary, his mother, never having to scold him. Him never being wrong to his siblings. He did nothing but good when he entered his earthly ministry at the age of 30. Hey, he did nothing but good. Made the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the, the blind to see, the dumb to talk. Fed the 5,000. Raised up the dead. This man did nothing but good. And they said, crucify him. Right. Crucify him. The man always did right, was always right. Amen. Marched up Calvary's mount, and God did right on Calvary. Yeah. What do you mean? Sin as a payment. Yeah. Jesus paid it. Amen. And he paid it in full. As he hung there on the cross and cried out, they did their best to kill him. They did their best. They couldn't kill him. He was God. They couldn't kill him. Amen. As he hung there, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's at that point in time during that three hours of darkness that our sin was poured out on him. Amen. He was literally made sin for us and God did right. Sin had to be paid for. And he was the only one that could make the payment. And he paid it in full, paid it with his blood. Played it, paid it on the cross. It was not just his death. 
It was that blood Amen. that he shed for you and I. And then they still couldn't kill him because after the payment was made, he cried out, It is finished. Amen. And he dismissed his own spirit. God always does right. He's so right, listen, that if a man dies in his sin, he'll have to pay his own debt and he'll never get the debt paid. He'll suffer for all eternity in the lake of fire trying to pay the debt that Jesus paid in full on the cross at Calvary. Hey, the deep righteousness of God. Amen. How can God be so right? He is. Amen. He's a righteous God. The deep love, the deep mercy, the deep righteousness. I'll leave on this. The deep reconciliation of God. Amen. That the fact that Jesus bridged that gap that God, through his son, man's reconciled back to God. Uh, you, you think about the gulf between paradise and, and uh, torment. Well, it pictures the gulf between man and God caused by sin. But Jesus hung there to recon so that we could be reconciled right. back to God. There's a song, I can't remember much in it. Heard a big southern choir, South Carolina, and a big church there, Larry Rain's church. They'd sing, boy, they'd, <laughs> folks would run the aisles and preachers would take their coats off and wave and run up and down the aisles. And, but the song was talking about out of the mire into the choir, Amen. glory to his name. Yeah. That's a deep reconciliation of God. That he comes to where we were, lifts us out of the miry clay, does for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, takes the old robe, the old rags of sin, and Jesus bore them on the cross, and God gives us his righteousness. Close us in the righteousness of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. to where you and I have been reconciled to God. I wasn't looking for God when God saved me. I wasn't. I knew about this man named Jesus. I knew about his birth not comprehending it, knew about it, knew about his death. I wasn't looking for him. But it's amazing how God worked and put things together. And God began to trouble the waters in my life. Showed me the only way was through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way I could be reconciled. My the deep things of God. Amen. Nothing about him is shallow. The deep things of God. They can only be discerned spiritually. The Spirit of God has Amen. to reveal them. That's, right, That's why I know you know this. You can be preaching to folk and some are hanging, I mean, they're hanging on every word. Yeah. It's like little birds, feed me. <laughs> and others are, <laughs> 
They're hearing with natural ears. Those on the edge of their seats are hearing with spiritual ears and are fascinated with the deep things that God reveals. If we can get a hold of the deep things that God, we won't be content with the shallowness of this world. We'll want all of him that we can get. Amen. Let's stand. I trust you'll do business with God. If not, just to thank him for the deep things. Thank him for who he is and that he passed by your way. If you're here and you've never been saved, it'd be a good time to come. Good time to come. There's a sweet spirit here tonight. It'd be a good time to come. Father, I've done my best to try to lift you up. My feeble attempt, Lord, it doesn't even dust the surface of the deep things of God. But I'm thankful you're such a loving God that you'll reveal to us who are just so unworthy, just a bunch of sinners, in reality, just a, just a bunch of uh, unclean dogs, nothing, nothing worthy about us. But God, you'll pass by our way and reveal to us the deep things of God. That we don't have to stay in our condition. That you'll be merciful and uh, that you'll do right. I pray you'd help us on this invitation. Lord, our country needs to see a movement Amen. of God. Yeah. Our churches yeah. need to experience a reviving. Amen. But it'll never happen as long as we live shallow lives. Yes, We've got to get a hold of the deep things of God. Help the man of God as he comes. Give him wisdom, discernment. Over the remainder of the service, and we'll thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Preacher, you come.